Come right on in. You're at Father Fish. I have lost count of how many people have asked me to do a video about bettas. I have bettas in one, two, three of my five tanks. And it's the only thing in those three tanks. Actually, I've got them in four because I got bettas back here. I get bettas everywhere. And I have them because I got a bunch in and then they spawn and I have the fry. I've got little ones. There's so many different things you can do with a betta. You can keep it in a little jar like they do at the store. We, we call it the bait shops system. <laughs> you keep your fish the way they do in bait shops. I don't recommend it, but it is a popular way of being able to maintain bettas. Just keep them in a little jar or maybe a slightly bigger jar like a gallon jar. Yeah, you can do that. You can do about anything you want to do with that is because they don't much care, truthfully, where they live. Except, funny thing about boy bettas. After a while of living alone, they get really depressed. Bored even, but mostly depressed. Now you can keep their spirits up by feeding them every day and talking to them and entertaining them and that works for a while but the bottom line is that at some point in time that little boy better really wants a girl better and so you just have to do it you just have to break down and provide a girl better for your boy we're going to talk about how to get a girl betta and how to introduce her to your boy betta. First of all, if you want to do this, in order to be able to have babies that are going to survive, then you need to have a tank that has a food web in it. Now maybe you don't know what a food web is. If you don't know, you need to learn. And we've got lots of videos about how to create a food web and how to set it up and how to keep it going and all that stuff. So you need to learn that. You need to create that. What size tank is good to work with? It sort of doesn't matter. I like 10 gallon tanks because they're convenient, they're easy, they're small enough to be able to manage without much trouble. But you can go bigger or you can go smaller. A one gallon tank will work. I do recommend a 10. You want first to create a food web. Now, what that means is you need a lot of microfauna, a lot of microscopic food living in the tank. And the reason that's critical is because that's what the baby fish are going to feed on for at least the first week or two of their lives. You're not going to be able to provide food for them. They're much too tiny and they really need that live food in order to survive the first week of their lives. So it's critical. There's no other effective way to do it. You must have microscopic food for baby bettas. Otherwise, give up the notion you're not going to make it. It's not going to work. I mean, you can feed egg yolk or paramecium or whatever you can raise. You can feed dry food, but you're not going to have anything like a high grow rate. You may save one or two out of hundreds, but you're not going to get 20 or 30 or 40 babies growing up. And that's really what you want to try to do. So, live food web. Mm -hmm. 
you start by putting the mail in the tank and then just adding leaves, adding leaf mulch, adding material that has all of that microscopic fauna in it. And he'll be feeding on that. I mean, that's going to be a source of food for the male. Once you've got that established, then you want in a separate tank to have a female that you've been doing the same thing with, that you've been feeding, so that she gets nice and fat and full of eggs. You should see a little egg right at her ovipositor, just barely coming out of her, a little tiny white spot. If you see that tiny white spot, then you can put the girl in with the boy. And they will spawn in a matter of hours, if not a day or two. It's going to happen very quickly. You need to keep a close eye on them. Once the male blows a bubble nest, that's a good point to put her in. Now, if you want, you can float her in a jar or a glass in the tank and give him a chance to blow that bubble nest. Once he does, release her. It is important to have plants growing in the tank in order to provide a place for the female to hide if she gets bullied because the male can be very aggressive at that point. But if she's ready and she's full of eggs, they're going to breed in a matter of, as I said, a few hours, a day or two at the most. Watch them carefully. You will see eggs in the nest. Once you do, and she's off and away somewhere, take her out and leave the male in there with the eggs. They will hatch in one day, and he'll be busy trying to keep them up in the nest until they finally start swimming, which will be in day two. At that point, you want to take the male out. You're better off leaving the babies in there, removing the parents and giving the tank to the babies. It will work so much better than trying to remove them and set up something else, which isn't gonna work very well. So, you are now day three. You have babies in the tank, swimming around. You've taken the mother out. You've taken the father out. Do nothing. Put nothing in there, at least for the first three to four days. They will feed on the microscopic food, and you will see them begin to grow. They grow very quickly. They will double in size in a matter of two to three, four days at the most. At that point, you can begin to put food in the tank. The reality is that once they get to a certain size, they're going to put a lot of pressure on that microfauna. And they will be looking for it and they will pretty well decimate it. So you will need to feed. If you can get another culture going of paramecium or something a little larger, like Daphnia, you can be begin feeding that. If you can hatch baby brine shrimp in three to four days, they will be big enough to eat baby brine shrimp. At that point, after four, five, six days, about a week, you can begin feeding dry food. Now, I like to feed decapsulated brine shrimp eggs. They're easily available. You can get them online. I think I sell them. I sell a mix of three or four different kinds of microscopic food for tiny baby fish. So you can buy it from Father Fish. There are other sources as well. And that's really all you need to do for the first month or more and just watch them grow. Now, don't overfeed. Don't put too much food in there because it'll foul. You don't want that to happen. 
But the reality is that any excess food you put in there is going to be taken up by the microfauna. So you're going to have a pretty well-balanced tank. It's going to work out pretty well. And you should be able to get 20 to 30 bettas growing quickly enough that within a month or so, they'll be half an inch long or better. So try this system. It works really well. You'll be amazed how effective it is. And then get back to us and let us know how you're doing. Try this. Make it happen. You will be delighted. It's a lot of fun and really quite simple to do. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Make sure you check out the father.fish store where you can buy some supplies for these baby bettas, plants, microfauna, and the food that you'll need. It's all there and all available. Get over on Discord and be part of the conversation. There are folks over there just dying to hear about your baby bedas. Take care for now. Love you all. Bye-bye. <laughs>